Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys are on Twitter, Facebook, DeviantArt, all those kinds of cool places, uh, and you'd like to connect with me, by all means, head over to my website, and on the right-hand side, you can clicky-clicky all the linky-linky, and it'll take you to some fun stuff. And uh, so yeah, I want to say thanks. Sorry about yesterday, the show's... Every, supposed to be, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, however, my internet went out. Uh, my modem had broke, so I had to take it, yada, yada. It's all fixed. Obviously, we're good to go right now. And, uh, yeah, the party's ready to go. Um, just a little update of content that will be coming out. Uh, there is, I have two videos planned. Uh, the one I'm hoping to do some recording after the stream. Uh, I did another Q&A video on YouTube. If you guys don't know what that is, basically I just go over a, a chunk of videos that are in between the questions and answers of people that have asked questions on various videos that I have most likely not had a chance to reply to. Uh, and I just answer them all in one big hour-long fiesta a la comics. And ho hopefully I can help people out with that. And uh, the other video is somebody else. I, I apologize, I forget your name. Uh, I believe it was on Twitter. Asked if I can just do like a new video just showing the tools and stuff that I'm currently using in Manga Studio 5. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not really artsy fartsy stuff. Um, hopefully we can get some more of those videos going pretty soon. Uh, but most of it is going to be this here. And this project here is uh, what I've been talking to you guys about. Uh, it's called Worlds in Peril. It's a role playing game, tabletop RPG. And the, the intro, when you open the book, for anybody that's played role-playing games, usually there's like a player's handbook or, excuse me, some sort of guide that starts it off and uh, showing you character creation and how the game's played. As opposed to text, we were able to uh, get extra funding through Kickstarter and we were able to turn it into a comic book. So that's what this is going to be here. You guys are probably going to see a whole bunch of this kind of stuff. I'll go over the method that you guys in the pre-show probably saw how I was drawing. Um, and I did talk about this before, about not wanting to do this style because I didn't really like the results, but we'll get to that. One of the last things I guess I'll just shove down your guys' faces so we can get started is this show, this whole hour, hour and a half, however long we go, is 100% for everybody that's in the chat, okay? So anybody that has any comments or questions that maybe I can help you with, uh, by all means, toss it into the chat. Please put it in all capitals so that I can uh, sort them out easier. And uh, don't be shy. If you're watching and you don't have an account, by all means, it's free. Just take the time to set it up. If I can help you out, I will. Chances are, if you have a question or a concern or something's itching you about maybe comics or just illustration in general, coloring, anything, um, somebody else has probably got the same problem. So if you can hit a bunch of birds with a couple stones there, even better. So anyway, until we start getting some questions, I just want to say hello to everybody in the chat. Thanks for everybody that was here during the pre-show. Uh, this right here is everything we did in about the half hour leading up to the show. Uh, this method here, uh, I found, I believe it was Ryan Otley I talked about from Invincible that works like this. Uh, he, I don't know if he does it all the time, but what the, the things that I had seen, he does this outline around everything. It's a contour line. And uh, then you can go in there and add your details. What I really dig about it, now that I've spent some time with it and trying to understand it a little bit better, is that it allows for... I don't want to just say quick work, quick turnaround times, nothing like that. It allows for ease of details. Um, once this, like, let's just take this guy right here. Uh, he's got like a device in his hand, the walkie-talkie. He's basically drawn. You know, I could put him in all black, and he would still read as a character. You wouldn't know what he's holding, but that's fine. But I can still go in here, and we, like, I've already done the pencil work for his face, which I'm going to do with you guys, is ink this guy up. Um, and then worry about the shadows and stuff. But what's really cool is, again, it's the other way that I would normally draw. And I think most people draw. And if uh, you do this style here, maybe you already know where I'm going with this. But if I was to draw it the other way, like a normal person or a normal style, I should say, you kind of start somewhere. If it's a face, an arm, a leg, a hand, background, anything. You pick something to draw, and you kind of start going in here, so I'd start worrying about the nose, ink, and the nose, and the eyes. And then eventually it gets to the, the contour, like the outlining shape of an object, and that's when it starts getting kind of like, all right, now i got to you know really think about this stuff. Whereas with this method, 
you're already blocking all of that work in. You know, you've already done all that work. Um, but I don't appreciate you guys. Try it out. See if you like it. Especially if you're working digital. Shouldn't take uh, too long to make a new layer and try something new that might help you out. And even if you're working traditionally, that might work as well. Um, the other new method I'm trying here uh, is going back to the old school way that I used to do backgrounds. Back when I would just use paper and a pencil and a ruler. Which is, you block in a perspective grid and then you lightly pencil in your background like you've seen and uh, then you just lightly kneadable eraser the whole thing and you just start drawing you don't even use a ruler uh, some people don't like it you can get jittery lines if you look at this guy here like this whole building is wiggle town um, however I'm trying to line it up to the perspective that I've already done what it does let you do is it lets you noodle and it gets your line work a little tighter I found um, when I used to do this quite a bit that lines became I don't want to say straight but they were definitely getting to the point where it was passable without an, uh, a ruler. So you might want to try that out. Maybe you, you'll dig the results you get from that. Oh, Zelda. Wait. You guys are getting a bad habit. You guys keep bringing toys when we start doing the stream. <sighs> Uh, so what else is new? Anything you guys are working on? Any projects you guys are working on? Any websites you guys would like to plug? By all means, throw them into the chat. Uh, my personal project, Spectacular Z. Uh, I've had to make the decision that I have to stop working on it. Um, I am going back to it. I'm not doing this again. But <laughs> I have to stop it so that I can put all my focus on uh, getting this artwork done. That way I can free up even more time to really sink down and uh, get the webcomic good to go. There's been a lot of inspiration lately on um, Facebook, which is rare, right? How many people walk away from Facebook feeling good? <laughs> After a couple thumb scrolls, you start to get like, ugh, the world's a poopy place. Poopy place. Um, but uh, one of my... I don't want to say long friends, but somebody I've known for a, a, a little while. Uh, Heather Breckel. I talk about her all the time. She's finally starting uh, a webcomic out of her own, which is... Uh, I just love seeing people that I know working on personal stuff. And I've always been... I've, I've tried to do one for Jessup King. There was a WordPress thing, Comics Press, I think it's called, that I, I downloaded. It's all free. You guys probably all know about it. And I tried to get it working, and it just... Ugh, it was just gross. And I don't know Heather's experience with all that stuff, but apparently she's got it up and running. Uh, very bare bones. It works. Um, besides actually putting content up right now, all that stuff. But needless to say, it's just inspirational to see it, saying that it's totally possible. And that's kind of bouncing back to what I was saying about taking a little break from the personal projects for now. Because once this is all wrapped up, there's no other really work to do. I do have a couple commissions and stuff. I can knock that stuff out. Um... But then I can, like, the idea of coming home after work and just sitting down and working on some personal projects and just taking the time that I now have to, like, hey, let's learn about freaking WordPress. Hey, huh, sounds pretty good to me. So that's the game plan for now. Uh, hello, Skrill. She's working, uh, just finished up her... Uh, what I apologize, because I know you post all the time on Facebook for your comic... It's a cigar for fuss and shush. Throw a link into the chat if you can. That way I can let everybody know on YouTube they can go check out your uh, your webcomic. Um, what else could I... Don't really... Tog them. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I got my uh, standing desk set up. That's all good to go now. I actually just went the absolute lazy way. I just bought another night stand, and I have two night stands <laughs> on my desk. Uh, the main reason for that is because now that I have the double monitor set up, or not the double monitor, sorry, the standing, the, the monitor up so that it's all ergonomic-ish, uh, <laughs> uh, now that I have all that set up, I just need a stool, actually, and then it'll be good to go. Uh, a 
forgot. Oh, okay. So if you guys wanted to check out uh, her web comic, head on over to T O G M dot webcomic dot W S, and the beginning there is just letters T O G M dot web webcomic dot W S. I actually got a comment on, well, a few comments on my Spectacular Red video that I posted a little while ago. And um, somebody that I've been following on YouTube for a little while, uh, who, who's highly inspirational, I, should, I, I highly recommend checking his stuff out. His name's uh, Dan Burke, and I believe I always butchered the last name, B-U-R-K-E, I'm pretty sure it's just how it is. And uh, he had this one point. And it just sort of like took me back, not in like a, an offensive way. Just maybe think about things a little bit. Um, oh yeah, no problem. Anybody, at any time. If anybody's got any like plugs they'd like to throw out there, by all means, just throw it in the chat. May as well get a bunch of traffic everywhere, help everybody out. Um, and he had this comment where uh, he was talking about how I brought up that I am, l I don't want to say pulling inspiration, like ripping off or anything, just. Inspiration is probably the better word for it. Uh, Mega Man, for the, sort of the art style. And he was looking, I guess, from the art style that I had done in that video, and it was really angular. It looked very uh, much how I would just normally draw, to be honest with you. And it was just a comment made me think, and he, and he started talking about the cartoons, round, soft shapes. And I'm like, of, co of course, that's exactly what it should look like. And I'm, and I, and I, uh, I forgot about it. I just got into the design of drawing the characters. It was just fun. And I just let my mind take over. So I've had like a couple, just thinking about it when I can, if that is the way that it should be, because that's just how like my subconscious basically pumped it out, right? Or actually start going into what could be generally or universally possibly um, enjoyed. Like most people understand cartoons are soft, simple shapes. There's more of an appeal there, especially for an all-ages book. Um, so, you know, I'm going back and forth, still playing around with the designs on that. It's a lot easier to draw the characters, I find. Um, however, the bad guys, that's where I still want to do uh, the rendering and all that somewhat detail. It was the same way that I was going to work on Guildborn, the fantasy book, where the monsters were all going to be like shadows and render lines and stuff, but the heroes were all those cute soft shapes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Squirrel's saying that webcomic that she uh, she posted a, or told us a link about before, it's uh, PG-13-ish. So I think you'll be fine. Today's day and age, I mean, I, I can't imagine. If I, I think I checked the analytics the other day on my YouTube channel. I think the average viewer, and if you're not this, cool if you are, awesome, is male around the age of 30, 30 to 50, which is actually kind of funny. It makes me wonder if most of the people that check out my stuff, <laughs> if they're like the old old school kind of cats of working comics and they're trying to get into digital maybe and that's somehow how they're stumbling on my stuff. <laughs> but as long as everybody's making comics, who cares? Who cares? So when I do these backgrounds here, I'm just trying to find some shapes to throw in. Uh, just like this stuff and then we'll worry about the details like the windows later those uh, I like to put in an extra grid on top because there's such fine details and my lines aren't 100% awesome sauce and they start to look real shaky and sketch but when you zoom out of this stuff it's not that brutal I mean once we start getting some color on there it's really not it's a style thing just gotta find what works for you always try new things right Let's actually put some detail on this guy. And one thing I remember uh, when working with a pencil and stuff is like not all lines are, are, are uh, closed, meaning like if you see the line underneath the one I'm drawing right now, there's gaps in it. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Again, it, I guess it more or less just fits the style of the book. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> there you go. So, uh, Mr. Bando in the chat is saying that's exactly what happened. Uh, he bought a Cintiq uh, because of a video, uh, I guess, that I did on YouTube. <laughs> so, nothing wrong with that. I'm trying to find new ways to get... I'm assuming uh, you probably... What was that? You talked about the benefits of working digital with your 12WX thing. Oh, okay. Right on. Well, hopefully it's helping you out. I mean, I, I'd hate it to be the opposite where I got you jazz or pumped somehow to go buy this expensive thing and you did. And it was like, well, this <laughs> this was a waste of time. That'd quite possibly be the worst, worst thing that could happen. So there's these gargoyle kind of things on top here. Um... I don't know if we're going to be having time to draw them. But I'll just put them on a new layer and then... Erase underneath it. We've got this hair in the way here. Uh, it's been hard to adapt, but you're getting there. Um, and Squirrel saying she found that getting the felt tip nib made a world of difference. The glass was too slippery with the plastic nib for me. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that as well, uh, especially with like the Intuos, that sort of stuff. When I when I first jumped into digital, I said a bunch of times uh, the DC Comics guy did digitally drawing comics, picked that up, and uh, in that. Freddy, anyway, and I'm pretty sure he still does it. He works with, like, a bamboo. I believe he even said as much in the book. Uh, so I had an Intuos at the time, and, uh, you know, I thought that was the fancy way to go. <laughs> but uh, I got accustomed to using that, and it wasn't... There's no glass surface on that. It's more matte, but it always felt like... I don't know. It just didn't feel 100%, right? I even tried putting paper over top of it and drawing it and stuff like that. Uh, but the most part, it's just, like... I don't know. It just never felt good. And then I forget who suggested it to me. Somebody did uh, of uh, exactly what Scrail said there of just getting like a different tip, a felt tip. And I'm definitely one of those guys where it's like if I buy something like a Cintiq here, I just use the stock stuff that comes out. I hate having to buy more stuff. I bought my Surface Pro and it's like, oh, you got to get a cover. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> I had to spend. It's like when you get a cell phone. It's like, well, you're going to need a screen protector, and you're going to need a, a case. You don't want to drop it after you spent all that money. And it always works, you know, usually for most of us. It's like, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I guess. So anyway, so I picked up that nib, and it made a world of difference. Uh, I had actually used the plastic one that came with it so much that it started making holes, like maybe uh, half the size of a dime. And then I'd have to recalibrate my thing just to move it around. It was getting brutal. Uh, Scrolls asked Jonathan, where do you find reference and inspiration for your buildings? Uh, there's a couple that you can do. The, the obvious one is just do a Google image search for like a city. Hopefully it looks roughly right, like the silly city, the city you want to do. Uh, I'm a little lazy. I'm actually really lazy when it comes to that. Even though I have a second monitor open, I have this document or this file open on that monitor as well so that I can be zoomed in here and when I look over here it's zoomed out so I can see if I'm noodling on details that don't matter uh, all that stuff um, so the other thing that I like to do is I'll just keep a comic book near me or a few comic books anyway of art that I really like especially for something like backgrounds and then I'll just flip through and I don't want to say copy them, but look at like different shapes and stuff like this sort of thing here, this little perched ledge. It just it breaks up this kind of shape of a building, you know, like if you do that, that's fine. I'm actually going to do some back here. But when you're up close, it's nice to like maybe break it up like this, you know, and then you can start adding your your perspective lines to the building. And it just makes it look like there's something it's more interesting, right? 
But yeah, highly recommend uh, comic books. If you don't have any comic books, um, maybe your best bet would just be to do Google or image searches. Or I've seen some people, what they'll do is they look at their favorite movies and they just put it on their computer and they just start print screening all the cool shots they like and they just save it on their uh, computer. You can toss them on there. <laughs> and if you're using Photoshop, it's the one thing that I wish um, Manga Studio had, and maybe it does, I'm not really sure, maybe we can actually check that out, is the path tool, like with a pen. That way we can make a bunch of windows and just drop it in and then like beat them up a bit. What I used to do is I would take this scene here after I'd have the buildings like this, uh, export the file into Photoshop, put that path of the windows and then bring it back into here and then bang, bang them up a bit. Uh, it's kind of tedious, but at the same time, it's, um, I don't know, like it saves, it saves time, right? But whenever you have to start opening and closing programs, it can get kind of, kind of dinky. Hey kitties. Hey Jessup. Actually, you know what? We're going to do it right now because I think I haven't done it in a while. Hey big boy. How you doing? What you doing, bud? Oh, the big stink, huh? What you doing? Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to actually do it here just to see how it looks. And, and the other thing too is um, you can also, once you got that information, just use it on like a different layer and just draw over top of it. Kind of like a, a tracing sort of thing. Uh, what's that you, I have to do a lot of castles and I'm quite intimidated. One thing I would probably recommend is, I'm not sure if you're doing it already or not, Skrill, is just uh, open up SketchUp. Maybe if you, if you got the time, you know, you do, okay, yeah, if you got the time, maybe make like a castle that you might spend a lot of time at, like if it's the main scene, that way you can always get any shot you ever wanted. Highly recommended. I know, like I've seen it. I've seen some files from um, Marvel. Uh, Marvel has it for the Avengers, like that. The Avengers Tower. Uh, a lot of. I'm more than sure it's. They have everything. If it's Xavier's school, uh, I know DC has it for the JLA fortress and stuff. And what they do is they just give these files to artists if they need them, or you can require, or you can ask for them. And uh, it's just for artists to use for Google SketchUp, and then they import. The Avengers Tower, and then they can kind of move the camera around and get the angle they want. It just saves so much time, right? So, uh, we're not going to... Oh, what's up, uh, Will? <laughs> I keep calling you by your last name, man. Jeez. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little, a little different. I'm going to go in the old school method here. We're going to open up Photoshop, and we're going to import some windows. Might draw over them, or might bang up the art a little bit. We'll see. We see. How's my Jessup doing? How's the big boy? How's the big studs? Oh. Okay. Once the computer's done having a heart attack. Okay, so let's open Monga Studio. All right, so we're gonna have that. Uh, what are we gonna do here? Let's turn off our pencil layer. Kinda need it to line things up. Uh, gosh. I don't want to export a PSD because it might take forever with you guys. Uh, let's try it. Export layered PSD. <laughs> oh, it's your first time coloring. How's that going? Hello, Jessup. Hi, buddy. How are you? Uh, contains layer information that not be whatever. Does anybody read that stuff? Output. I don't know what any of. Sure. What's wrong, buddy? Huh? I wish I could speak kitty. Oh, what's the problem, bud? You just want the pets? You just want some pets with daddies? Huh? What's he doing? We're waiting for Photoshop, buddy. We're waiting for Manga Studio and Photoshop. It's crashing the computer. Yeah. You big lug nut. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. 
Alright, sorry this is taking so long, everybody. I wish I had a really cool computer. <laughs> oh, somebody's got some art that they're posting. Let's take a little looky look. For some reason, every time I try to click on uh, links in the chat, they just never work. You gotta copy paste it. All right. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> good old Capullo, eh? For sure. That oh, looks good. It looks like you got your tones down and stuff, man. Looks real good. Done. Okay. What, buddy? I. <laughs> what? What do you want? What? Here. The one up there. Come here, buddy. Uh, there you go, buddy. So you can see what's going on. Okay, so let's open this up here. Desktop, uh, 600. This is cool drawing, isn't it? Watching loading screens. Just up. crap I think this was a bad idea to do on this stream jeez there oh Jesus oh okay so it opened up here okay that's right it took forever there's like a whole bunch of <laughs> whole bunch of uh, different folders and stuff look at that load time jeez gross all right, let's try to just hammer this down. Sorry, guys. Uh, image crop. This is probably a bad one, too. <laughs> what is this? is awesome this is digital comics guys this is uh, the <laughs> uh the trenches right now waiting for loading bars god we're deep 
We're real deep. I mean, to be fair, uh, like I say, the computer's not that great. This is a 600 DPI file with a bunch of folders, bunch of layers. Um, excuses, excuses. Jess up. Can you cheat? Oh, he's a fly he's going after. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so unfortunately I'm not going to waste everybody's time with doing that. Maybe we can just get around it here. Okay, so what all I'm trying to do is to show you guys a different way that how I used to do this stuff. Uh, if you wanted to speed up doing some buildings. And you can just import this in the Manga Studio. It's all good. So we have to open more files. It's pretty good. Okay, art, master reference, come on. Wondering if this is even going to matter now, all this. Uh, building paths, open. Okay, so we got this folder here. Jeez, took a while. And under the paths, there's a whole bunch of different things we got in here. I use a lot of this on the standard. Uh, city buildings. Uh, city buildings too. I think what I'm looking for is kind of like these, I guess, I was going to go for the gothic buildings, but it's kind of silly. Uh, we got some superhero logos and stuff. You guys have seen all this. So let's pick a building. I'm going to pick our select tool. Uh, what's the shot? Uh, I guess we can go with... Maybe we'll go with this guy here. So you just select that. I'm going to right click. Uh, should be a copy. Guess not. So we're going to go control C. comic page and paste and the beautiful thing about uh, <clears throat> what's it called paths is they let you it's just like vector it is vector work right so you're able to change the size of them all that cool stuff so nothing's ever really too small or too big it's just rad Yes, up. Okay, give me one second, you guys. Here, my cat's absolutely losing his shit. Okay, come on, buddy. That's enough. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. You can go save the day some other day. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Go for it. Just up.
Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, so we got this here. Um, all you gotta do now is just literally transform it. So edit, transform, path, distort. And it's gonna give you four points. And if what you worked on was a a box or a rectangle, then you're perfect. You already got the shapes that you'll need. Okay? Or not the shapes, sorry. The uh, points that you'll need. So edit, transform path, distort. Just gonna move it. Uh, so this point, we'll just click down here. So we another point way down there somewhere. Another one way up there. And another one here. So as you can see already, it's starting to, you can already see the perspective it's already good to go. This saves so much time, and honestly, like, I, the first thing I checked for when I, when Manga Studio 5 came out was if they finally had paths. And like I say, they, it might actually be in Manga Studio 5. I just haven't had the time to look. I should really make time. Um, in Photoshop, obviously, this is, you know, this is powerful stuff. It lets you do background work much faster. You know, this is... Some people like doing this. More power to them. It's just, it's tedious. Right? Um, there's nothing wrong with being tedious. But uh, this is a deadline driven field. And that's why things like this exist. That's why there's a. Uh, <laughs> more creative people that are doing comics or whatever all day long that have already figured this out and spent the time and went yep yeah, this is a this is a solution to help me and other people uh, hit deadlines faster so we just hit enter so we're good to go there as you can see it's such a, it's such a small thing because this character here this uh, mohawk dude he's uh, right in front right and it's, you can't really a lot of this detail is going to get lost anyway However, if you got a cool computer, <laughs> this shouldn't be that brutal to you. Uh, this is actually talked a lot about in the Freddie, Il Freddie Williams guide. Um, so, again, highly recommend picking that up. So, I'm just going to pick a brush and we're just going to stroke it here, stroke path. Uh, we're going to stroke it with the brush and hit OK. And I just want to see. Uh, how thin the lines are. So if we zoom in, uh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, so all I would do from here, honestly, is uh, where is it here? Let me zoom out. Select all, copy. Now we're going to go back into Manga Studio. And like I say, the part that sucks is the flip-flop in between programs. And some could argue that <laughs> the work would already be done. Studio isn't there. We go. Uh, I'm just quickly checking out the chat while I'm waiting for the stuff to load. One thing I will say is to build up these libraries in Photoshop. What I was doing was every day that I would open up Photoshop, I tried to make it a habit as and be as disciplined as I possibly could and make a new building path every time I was in there. And the whole reason for that is. After, like, even if you do that for 30 days, you have 30 paths that you can just, you know, abuse and do what you need to. Uh, okay, so let's, it's interesting that it pasted it like that. So let's just put it on a multiply layer. And obviously we're going to change some of this up. Uh, where's my stylus? There it is. So, like I said before, we even let me just close Photoshop so I can get some freaking RAM back. File, close. You pig. No. 
die. Close. Exit. No. Uh, and Will's saying uh, it looks really flat and it takes the fun out of drawing backgrounds. Yep, that's... <laughs> It's definitely one way to look at it. Um, polygon, there we go. So, like I said before we started this, we're not going to leave it like this because it does exactly what Will said. It tends to flatten things out. Um, in my opinion, it honestly doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, there's different ways of doing everything when it comes to art. Uh, and a lot of them come down to again style choices. So let me delete all this side here. Uh, clear. Okay, so just give it my computer a second here. So let's just erase all this stuff we're not going to need. And I used to do this in Photoshop too, just leaving it with this path. Uh, it does look little boring um, so I like to bang up the line art to make it look less um, perfect uh, especially with everything else that I'm doing with the backgrounds like the new thing that I uh, was telling you guys when we started of doing all these backgrounds without rulers or straight lines or anything like that or trying to freehand as many straight lines as we possibly can uh, leaving something like this in there it, it'll stand out like a sore thumb all your imperfections they're like <laughs> they are highlighted and uh, I think one of the worst things you could do, especially to your readers, is have them stumble on your art, right? Like, I don't know about you guys, but um, the comics I get, every now and then I'll go back and I'll just reread certain pages and stuff. But uh, some, like, I haven't really done it in a long time, but there's times when art would make you stumble on what you're looking at and it would just really start to look like I don't know it just affected the whole reading experience and it, it wasn't it wasn't pleasurable it wasn't uh, something that I would remember as a positive thing and uh, yep, yep. <laughs> your book is an underwater tale so perspective is warped <laughs> perfect how you doing Michael and Skrill saying some people enjoy drawing backgrounds and she is not one of them. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. Draw what you like to draw because you're going to draw it probably better than people that don't, right? So be proud of what you're doing. Okay, so we've got all this stuff here. Again, um, I'm not leaving it in like this. I just wanted to show you guys something like this uh, as an, a way that you could possibly do some work. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to actually turn the opacity. I'm just going to draw over this, uh, change some of the things that are here and make it a little bit more uh, matching to what's going on. Because you can see like there's this line right here where things aren't lining up because I freehanded the perspective there, right? And unfortunately, it's not as correct as it should be. But we'll get over that. Not a big deal. Um, actually, let me see if I can put this in my pencil there. Maybe. Cool. Okay. So let's get back to Inky Inky. Uh, pen tool and let's go. Uh, pretty good, man. Just trying to get some uh, some good old comic book work done. <laughs> wow, look at this lag. Gosh. So you can see there's things here, like this line doesn't make sense when the perspective's there, so we're just going to freehand it. And um, I'm using this guide that we already, or not this guide, but what we just did as a reference. Kind of going back to what Scrail asked a little bit earlier on where do you find reference and inspiration for backgrounds? This is a, a quicker way to do it, I suppose. Um, I don't. Well, I don't want to say that. It's it's just a, a different method of doing it. I'm sure. Well, I know there's faster ways to do this where you could actually just draw the grid and then kind of freehand all this stuff. 
Um, it's like even here, I'm going to cut these windows off right there. Just because I already have that perspective grid lined in. And at least that'll be more straight than uh, what we're looking at. And they should probably start just quickly boxing this in. Um, I don't want to do the whole stream just doing backgrounds here because it is pretty boring. Um, we're going to go and do one of the characters in the foreground here. Backgrounds are important, but uh, I don't know. It's not what I like looking at art for myself. Uh, in saying that, yes, there's really cool things that you can do with perspective to make people more interested in your art and to make it seem believable and stuff. Uh, that's not really what I like about backgrounds for me. Backgrounds serve the purpose of the story and or the characters drawing it. Or not the characters drawing it, but the characters in the story. That's what I'm more, uh, I care more about. Um, that's just me. That's just uh, some flavor. Okay, so we got this guy here. This is the one we're going to work on. So let me zoom in a little bit. So like I said, we already got all this sort of um, contour lining done. And it makes our job much easier. Uh, I don't want to work on the face just yet. I want to warm up a little bit. Yeah, I share your pain. Background work is pretty tedious. And the worst part about it, I mean, if, if you enjoy doing it, Again, more power to you. Kick its ass. Do it. Uh, do what you like. Um, but one of the things that I'm really trying to focus on lately, anyway, is I guess catering to people that like to read comics how I like to read them. And I know that sounds a little, or might sound a little weird, but I don't. When I look at comics that I buy, uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, Batman, other things like that. Like, I might look at the backgrounds here and there to just because it helps place the characters, right? And there's a lot of detail work that goes into the backgrounds um, that I might not even really notice, but my subconscious picks up on, right? Gotham City looks like Gotham City. Um, and if it doesn't, Batman feels weird. Um, a perfect example for myself, anyway, is the the current Batman run. I love the the original new Batman with Capullo and stuff. Now, like right now, um, like myself, I just dropped the book, um, and I'll wait to see how the new stuff looks. I can't really stand the way it looks right now. Everything's neon. It doesn't feel, and I I can I get the arguments and stuff where it's like this is before I guess he was Batman or um, his training and all that fun stuff. So it's not the Gotham we know. I get that, but. I'm one of those guys, I guess, that I complain about. <laughs> Where I get a Batman book, I just I just want some clean Batman. Uh, like the original, like the new stuff that Capullo and them, they were bringing out in the beginning was, oh man, that was awesome stuff. Now it's just, I don't know. To me, it just doesn't feel like there's any heart in there. And that that's, might be a little weird to say, but that's just my opinion. And I don't know. Anyway, so there's that. But the backgrounds, they definitely help set the characters in something. They're very important stuff, right? Absolutely. But the the people that I'm trying to cater to, I guess, are, are people that are just flying through comics. They're just picking it up, and they get their 10 minutes of entertainment, and then they move on, you know? Uh, uh, I, get, I don't want to say I'm done catering to artists, because that doesn't really make much sense, but if there's a bunch of artists in the chat room right now, there's a bunch of people, you know, in here that are most likely just here because they like to draw and stuff like that. They don't necessarily, they're not, I doubt, I highly doubt that there's people in this chat just watching because they've got nothing else to do and they just like to see art. You know what I'm saying? Um, it could happen, but I doubt it. And I think the average person that goes to pick up a book that's not an artist, they're just flipping through it. They're getting the story. Maybe they're prob probably, because I know I've done it, so other people have to do it. I've skipped word balloons in books just because it's like, okay, it's dragging, right? And those are all things that just, it, it turns into the whole comic book experience, right? So for myself, I mean, that's one reason why. I don't want to say I'm skimping up backgrounds. That's not what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say. Uh, but if there are ways that you can speed up the process, that's, um, I, I suppose, where I'm trying to go with all that is keep, keep your eye open for things that you don't like to do and 
do some research, look around online, see what other people are coming up with to solve these solutions. Like you can't be expected, I don't think, to let's just say backgrounds. You can't be expected to just because you're a comic book artist draw everything and love the entire process. I don't think that exists, personally. Um, you can like drawing, you can love drawing, you can love being paid to draw and all that stuff, but there's got to be at least something that you might not like to draw. Maybe it's uh, you're going to be doing a realistic He-Man on ponies or something, and you just don't like drawing ponies. You know what I mean? Like it's, I know it's random, but there's got to be resources out there that people have found out, because other people might not like drawing ponies. <laughs> I don't know why we're on the pony thing right now, but uh, there's got to be, like, there, I know for myself... I've looked up things for like animals where because I don't draw a lot of animals you look up tutorials on people that are like how to draw a fill in the blank animal here you know and they show you little like tricks and you pick up on those tricks and then you bring them back to your other stuff so just be on the lookout for you know things that things that are cool uh, Sorry, I didn't. There was a question that I didn't see. It. Sorry. Any chance you could draw a few forearms up? I would like to see how you layer your muscles. Uh, yep, totally could do that. One second. Um, you had a bad anchor too. It takes me four to five minutes to get through it once. <laughs> okay, no. I <laughs> uh, outward facing belly buttons bother me when I have to draw. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I uh, love you guys. Okay, so let's draw some forearms. Everybody likes forearms. Actually, it's like the last few requests have just been forearms. I, I find that very interesting. Uh, let me move this stuff here. Um, what time are we? Okay, so we've got about five minutes technically. I'm going to jack it up to ten because that's usually the way this goes. So if you guys have any questions, by all means, please jam them into the chat in all capitals so that you know I'm going to ramble that's just how it's gonna go when I start drawing here uh, so that I can scroll up really quickly and see if there's some questions that I can answer okay so I will do my best to help you guys out so let's tackle the first question let's draw some full ROMs man so let me just get to a, a blue pencil uh, let's see how light she is Ooh, that nice. Look at that. Okay, so. And you wanted to see how I layer my muscles on. Okay, so I'll try to... Um, we'll do some standard arms. Then we might do one quick perspective one. All right, so we've got our, um, our hand here. Maybe we'll put an elbow there. So I've always talked about how I like to do this stuff. There's little anchors that I, I try to always remember or put for myself. Is uh, the elbow is one. I like to have like a straight line like a block at the bottom of the wrist and the shoulder is always fun town um, but I can already see it because I've drawn it quite a bit so what I'll, what I'd like to do here is there's always like this muscle right here that comes off the um, elbow and it wraps in here and then there's some other action going on up here uh, but nothing ever really at least the way I'm I understand it and I draw it anyway and I'm probably wrong uh, nothing ever really seems to touch the uh, oh, touch the elbow so all these cool muscles can go in here. I do want to point out as well that when I actually do go to draw this stuff, I don't take this long to like start figuring out like, okay, so there's, a, it's all like instinct after a while. Um, a lot of the same poses are, are drawn over and over again. And then there's slight variations in them. Uh, so there's that. Uh, maybe we'll put the person kind of standing to the side, three quarter, everybody loves those ones. Uh, so get your shoulder in there. Just got a fist. Get, why is this so big? Okay. And again, uh, just work in those shapes I told you about that that I like anyway. So when I see the arms this way, I don't maybe I don't know where the elbow is right away, so I'll just block in. Okay, well that's where the wrist has to go. And then I can kind of feel this out, so maybe I'll just start putting in some cylinder shapes to help me find that perspective. So, oh, okay, so we're gonna go this way. Um, so the elbow might be there, probably not. It's probably on this side. It doesn't always stick out, but it's nice to know that it's there. And then I'll start like structuring things out. So the bicep has to come in here. Um, and then that big muscle, this one, we're putting here. 
goes in there but it wraps around a lot of fun town going in there and we've got our shoulders stuff like that uh, there's some triceps on this side stuff like that um, and for like maybe a, a dynamic a more dynamic one maybe we got since we're talking about Batman let's do like a Batman body he's hunching forward maybe he's blocking an attack or something got a big old mean forearm right up here the shots everybody draws this shot here so his hands up here um, so what I like to do when I draw this sort of stuff is I like to think of all everything in shapes. I don't like to do necessarily a cylinder, connect to a cylinder, because it tends to flatten things out. Um, it confuses me, to be honest. What it does help me do, in, like for this shot here, if I did this in cylinders, what it helps me do is see where everything's going. Right, like that's good knowledge. That's good to know. Um, however, myself in my style that I that I like to draw on, that is flat and it doesn't give me energy. It doesn't give me lines that I like. What I like to do is just feel that out and then figure out these shapes like this with actual lines. So, again, I know where my wrist is. Oh, we're gonna put an elbow. It's probably right here. Big old massive thing, and then I'll just bang, knock in a triangle shape up there because it's it's a folded muscle, so it's got to pop right, and then just start carving it out. I know there's some shapes here, uh, and then there's a shoulder up there, and then I can start to like build in. All right, so there's a pec, another pec, and maybe we got like his his chest down there, and then you got bats, other arm over here or something, right? There you go. So something like that, uh, and then once I get my inking ready to go. Then I can start to go, okay, now I can try to figure this out. So this bone here, this elbow, connects to the wrist, right? Uh, or at least I try to make it do that. Um, so I'm going to draw that side. Kind of go into her like that. And then just start making some, I don't know, like I say, you'll find your own style. Or you probably already have your own about how to um, make anatomy work for you and it's it's something I have anyway so I'm assuming you guys too uh, you'll, you'll continually try to find new ways to do uh, the same stuff that you do because it gets boring after a while like you know like this pose I've done a, a bajillion times and it's just like ugh. like I've seen this forearm so much it's just like it doesn't get me juice to draw it anymore like it works you know so we can we can do that, but it's not its not fun. <laughs> but anyway, so we have something like that. And then if you're doing like an extreme foreground shot, uh, or not foreground, but maybe somebody reaching out for somebody, a bunch of sausage fingers. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, again, find that wrist, lock it in. It's in there. And then, all right, so I know, again, there's a big old triangle shape and a round one down here there's an elbow somewhere in there and then you know tricep bicep and again obviously everything I'm drawing here like just totally rip people <laughs> there's, w there's a lot of different body shapes and types out there so I'd recommend searching that stuff up because fat falls on the body a little differently like let's just say this is a, uh, a larger chap You're not going to see like bang, bang, but you're not going to see all that stuff. It's most likely just going to, this is where your rendering kind of comes in. You can just, all right, so the forearm's kind of there, and then the arm's, you know, doing its thing. Uh, probably won't see too much bone on the, if they're pretty overweight. So it might just be something subtle like that. And I mean, it still works for somebody that's ripped, right? Because then you could you can even turn that fat into like just <laughs> boom, pure muscle. Yeah, steroids, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that helped you. And like I said, we've got five minutes left. So if anybody's got any questions, by all means, uh, dump them in the chat in all capitals. And uh, hopefully I can help you out. I just want to say thanks, everybody that stopped by tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, and for those of you that have been around since the pre-show, too, you guys are troopers. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too, too boring for you. Uh, maybe we'll 
på liksom. <laughs> and I was thinking about this too while I was drawing like all these thugs these no good people all of them have spiky hair. I gave this guy like one of those stretcher ear things. I'm like, after a while, I'm just drawing it. And I just got a kick out of like all these guys. Like they may as well just have tattoos, and they're just <laughs> anybody that's got like stretched ears or um, wild hair or ear piercings. Apparently, it's like you, by default you're a bad guy. You are a, a thug. And the worst part is like obviously most people don't agree with that. Yet I drew it. Other people draw it, and it's kind of like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> of course that's what a thug looks like. All right, let's draw this eye here. Uh, this is for Worlds in Peril. It's a uh, the tabletop role-playing game. So if you like Dungeons and Dragons or uh, Rift or any of those like old-school role-playing games, uh, it's very similar to that. Um, and in the beginning, there's this comic book that teaches you how to play the game. So it's a little bit better than just well, it's a lot better if you ask me than just reading a bunch of text. That's your dungeon master or whatever you guys like to call them. Has to read everybody and it's like, uh, I don't know. All right, let's give this guy some muscle. Actually, that's wrong. I should go here. And then that, go like that. And let's give him some scruff. in the hair. <laughs> See you later, Michael. Okay, so with that, I guess if there's no more questions, we'll wrap the show up. I want to say thanks one more time to everybody that stayed around. Uh, apologize as well for not having the show yesterday. Uh, like I said, my internet went down and I had to get a new modem. Uh, but obviously we are good to go. The show is normally every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you popped into the chat or the stream a little bit late, just take a look at the time right now. Subtract uh, an hour and 10 minutes, and that's when the show starts. Uh, what I've been doing lately and what I, I'm hoping to keep up is doing the pre-show, where all that is is I'm basically drawing whatever I'm drawing at the stream but there's just music, and you guys can ask questions in the chat, and I can answer that way. Uh, but that way I can just kind of get warmed up so that the show is not just like an instant uh, <laughs> figuring out problems and stuff. But definitely check that out. And one more recap. 
Uh, there should be two more videos posted on YouTube this week. Uh, well, three. This post recording that you guys aren't really going to miss. And the other two are, one of them is uh, questions and answers part two, uh, where I go over a bunch of videos that have questions that I haven't had the chance to answer, and I try to answer them while there's some recorded version of whatever I'm drawing that day. And the other one is somebody asked me on Twitter, and I, again, apologize because I forget the person's name. Uh, they were just wondering what my current setup is in Manga Studio 5 with all the tools and stuff I use. So I plan on going through that. Uh, I'll probably include a picture just so you guys can see the two monitors set up again so you can see why I do that because I know some people, uh, they, they don't see the the power in having two monitors, especially work, when you're working digitally. Uh, if you are working it and you got the money, most people... Uh, they they can get a second monitor. You don't need it, absolutely you don't need it, but if you have it, it's uh, definitely something that I think you should be using. Um, and I'll show you guys a little bit more about that. And like the pencils and all the all the settings, we'll open up all the tabs and you guys can do that and hopefully that can help you out with your guys' art and all that good stuff. So thank you once again for stopping by. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys are on Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff, on my website on the right-hand side, you can find links to all uh, the places you can find me online. So until next Wednesday, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you then. Bye.